knew that I wanted to be a journalist to tell stories and change lives. The only thing that got in my way? Having no skills or qualifications. But I haven't let that stop me. For 10 weeks, I'm traveling the country meeting real Kiwis and going to the places no one else wants to go. Like Granity and Wellington. I'm volunteer journalist Guy Williams. And this is New Zealand Today. Insanity, a small west coast town that slowly drowned. Ning. Natural coastal erosion exacerbated by climate change means that the sea is gradually eating granity alive. Here comes a beauty. Oh, push that there. There's our bloody fence breaking. Oh, shit. The first signs appeared when the school pool was ruined. Ten years later, houses are being destabilised and destroyed. Granity's 168 residents have been warned they have to leave. But incredibly, they refuse. Are they crazy, or is there still hope? I went to Granity to find out. The first person I met, local playwright Tracy McEwen, to talk about a town on the brink of extinction. So this is a town that's in a bit of trouble. OK. What should we do? No, I was asking you. That was supposed to be like an interview question. Yes. Did you say it in quite a theatrical voice? Yes. So you're a character who can do many voices? Yes. Can you do a British accent? Oh, I fucking can, mate. That's your British accent? Uh, no, I could do a lot better than that, actually. Can you do an hey, American accent? Uh, well, I can do no yoik. So how do you feel about Granity getting swept away into the sea? I'm not going to be an alarmist on this. Yeah? I'm not going to go and say, Houses are being destroyed. But they are, aren't they? Yeah. Well, can you tell me about the problems? I could tell you about them, Guy, but I'd rather show you through the magic of the theatre. OK, that sounds good. Woo! <laughs> Tracy leads the legendary local theatre group, The Granity Players. Their latest show is set in a dystopian future where granity is fully underwater. Some people drive for miles just to see the ocean, and look, the ocean's come right to our doors. What are you here to fish or look around? What do you mean? There's a show. You just missed the show. Jesus, where are you from? Christchurch? Isn't that Shoney's house? Where? Yeah. Over there, floating past the golf post. Hi, Hi Shoney. The play helps shine a light on the dire situation that Granity is facing and highlights what would be lost if everything was to go under, including the Granity players themselves. Hi, my name's T Race. My name is Chrissy. My name is Nikki Lagaluga. Well, my name's Mira McGill. My friends call me Golden Friend. Hi, uh, Frida Inter here. Sorry, what was your name? Uh, Frida Inter. My Frida. name's Frida Inter. My name is Juliet Hornblow. Nikki Lagaluga. And some other people call me things that you don't really want to hear. <laughs> Nikki Lagaluga. Why are you laughing before you say that? I oh, just. just saying my name is Nikki Lagaluga. Frida Inter. Fre Frida Inter. Is that a European name? Uh, it is um, Lithuanian, actually. Lithuanian? Can you yeah. say it slowly so I can understand it? Okay. Lithuanian. I uh, do theatre and a bit of rock and roll. Yeah, boy. Depending on what play we're doing, I'm either an actor or a musician. But well, I'm an actor, and my role is um, Magatha. What I love is that um, I'm so sh shy and um, in normal life, and when people see me on stage, they don't recognise me. We don't didn't even know who you were or anything before this project. Do you have a computer? Do you have a phone? Yeah, yeah, but I probably just look up more intelligent material, maybe. Oh. <laughs> so my favourite thing about Granity would actually be my friends. No crowds, hardly any amenities, and it's a wonderful place just to be yourself and do what you want, and it also fosters the arts. Is hardly any amenities a good thing? No traffic lights. Um, do what you want. 
I love the sea. I love the the way the waves sparkle in the sunshine. There's no uh, pressure to do things. It's a stressless um, environment. But it's not a stressless environment, is it? Like there's the, the sea levels are coming and wiping out the town. Sometimes I drive down the road and the sea's out on the road and you've got to kind of pick your way around the foam and the um, driftwood. Yeah. Um, and so we've had fun um, putting that into a humorous um, play. There's no doubt about it, we are deep in the depths of climate change now. The Granity players are incredibly resilient. They believe the town can be saved with erosion barriers and immediate action on climate change. But the saddest part of Granity's story is that no one seems to care. Is Granity worth saving? I decide to meet the locals and find out. So Vaughan, what the fuck are you up to? Ah, just making sure you fucking keep things proper. Is that your official title, is it? Ah, uh, we're on the radio station, part of the hall board. Are you on the radio? Yeah. So what sort of stuff do you talk about on the radio? What's going on in the community. And what sort of stuff is going on in the community? Fuck all. <laughs> I was surprised to learn that a town of less than 200 people had a punk rock radio station. I quickly realised that Granity was full of surprises, including a world-renowned judo club. G'day. Hello. Hey, mate. How are you? Kia ora. What's up? Where I was lucky enough to be taught how to fall over and over again. Just relax. Yeah, just relax. Don't. I can't relax. Ugh. But Granity is perhaps best known for its thriving art scene. And what is this? Well, this is called global warming. It's about global warming. It's a woman throwing a baby into a fire. Out of the fire. Oh, she's throwing it out of the fire. Yes. So one thing that strikes me straight away is that she has enormous um, bosoms. And you've also put a specific emphasis on the vaginal area. Is that, is that an intentional motif? She's actually on fire. She hasn't had time to mess about. So this woman is desperate. She's caught in a fire. My vagina is burned. <laughs> I've got to throw the baby out of the flames. That's right. Prickly. Explain the expression on her face. What's going on there? Well, she's in agony, of course. Right? She's in agony, yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. baby? No, the baby, uh, ready to be thrown, I suppose. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Granity was amazing, and I hadn't even got to the main attraction, the West Coast leading punk rock radio station, Bedrock FM. Sir, uh, uh, it's not raining. Are you allowed to smoke in here? I am. Here we get fucked. All right. This radio station been going for 22 years. Community radio. We don't like computers and crap, right? So that's why we keep it on CDs. And... Is your radio station playing off CDs? Yeah. Oh, you have so few CDs. <laughs> You've got like 20. There's more in there. OK, you got like 40 CDs. We used to have 3,000, but someone stole them. Oh, fuck, not your CDs, mate. Yeah, fuck them. We had a disaster. The roof fell off. The roof fell off? The roof fell off, and but someone stole the whole lot. This is, the, this is where your CDs got stolen. And we used to have them all the way around the walls. It says, a block. It says International Artist, R to Z. Yeah. And it's just completely empty. Fucking hell. Except for one album, which is The Feelers Communicate. <laughs> Fucking not even as a nest, or are they? So, and um, I'd like to say, if anyone wants to give us CDs, we need them. All right. Fucking Smilton Radio. Let's go. We need CDs. Where are they? We need them today. G'day, guys. Um, it's Guy Williams here. I just want to say if anyone's got a CDs, because we we've only got, like, three. Yeah, fucking... Where are they? Where the fuck are the CDs, <laughs> Yeah, fucking... Someone stole them. Fucking give us back your CDs, you fucks. <laughs> yeah, you fuckers. Oh, that's fucking fantastic. Thank you very much. I, I, I've worked in radio for about three years. And that was one of the worst voice breaks I've ever heard in my life. No, fucking, you should be here. There's worse ones. 
<laughs> I loved gravity. I couldn't stand around and watch it be destroyed. So I hit the road so I wouldn't have to. That was a joke. I'm driving to Greymouth to save Granity. And you won't believe what happened next. Holy fuck. A dangerous mix of coastal erosion and climate change means that the tiny west coast town of Granity was rapidly falling into the sea. What's worse is that no one seems to care. Until now. I was taking Granity's case right to the top. The West Coast District Council. But the council refused an interview because I'd gone to the wrong council. And when we sent an email to the right council, they also refused. In a shocking twist, the West Coast District Council doesn't recognise climate change. So I went to approach council chairperson and climate change denier Alan Birchfield at his business face to face. Holy fuck. He's a coal miner. Granity couldn't get the support it needed because its own councillors were directly invested in denying climate change. What the council has said is that they would like to see the science proven beyond a doubt. Then without warning, Alan Birchfield showed up. Alan, I'm doing a story about Granity, the town that's falling into the sea. No, okay. That's fine. Oh, nice to see you. Okay. He drove off. And with him, my last chance to save Granity. This was a fight against the sea, and the sea was winning. I didn't know what to do. Granity needs an estimated $30 million worth of protections and upgrades. There's no way they can find that sort of money on their own. Tourism is dead, coal is dying. All Granity has left is their art, and their amazing abilities to produce music and theatre. And that's when it hit me. Music plus theatre. Musical theatre. Hamilton, Lin-Manuel Miranda's hit musical about Hamilton made over a billion dollars. If we could make a hit musical about Granity just 0.03% as good as that, we could make enough money to save Granity. I worked all night, but writing a hit musical is harder than it looks. I needed inspiration, so I took a break and visited what TripAdvisor says is the only attraction in Granity, the Hector Country Music Museum, which is actually in Hector, obviously. Owner-operator Barry showed me around one of New Zealand's best country music museums. Wow, so where are we here? 50 years of work, 50 plus actually, of uh, collecting. So what's that? That is uh, Australian legend, Slim Dusty. What's that? They're caps from Tamworth and that, and been signed by artists. What's that? That's a uh, lap steel that I built. Wow. What's his name? Chad Morgan. He's the ugliest man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's what? It says strictly private. That's my room, where all the goodies are. What sort of goodies you got in there? <laughs> CDs. CDs. Someone stole them. Fuck, not your CDs, mate. Yeah, someone stole the whole lot. Can I see your CDs? Sure, they can. We'll go in. Wow, this is a lot of CDs. There's a lot of CDs in here. A lot of CDs? There's about 8,500 CDs. 8,500 CDs? Where'd you get all your CDs from? Oh, overseas and, uh, you know, bought them locally. and. Locally? I had a chap from America in here and he reckoned I was sitting on a... He called it a goddamn fortune. And when I showed him to the albums, and he'd done 50 years in the record, all my albums. It's a fuck of my CDs. They're not your CDs. They are. Get out of here, Vaughan. <laughs> Did you steal your CDs from Vaughan? No, no. You sure? Positive. How much punk rock you got here? None. Look, I'm going to take the whole lot. No, you're not going to take yep, the whole I'm lot. Taking them. <laughs> These are mine. Vaughan, are you drunk? Am I sober? It's the other question. Sorry, Vaughan thinks he's missing his CDs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Vaughan, well, well, which of these CDs are yours? Oh, most of these ones with the stickers on them. I'm sorry about this. That's OK. I'm <laughs> taking a whole lot. Vaughan, these are not your CDs. They fucking are. Vaughan, get the fuck out of here right now. Yeah, Vaughan, I don't know what... Vaughan. Ah, oh, sorry, man. I just... I saw the stickers. Vaughan's unwavering commitment to getting his CDs back was inspirational. I needed to put that same passion into writing a musical that would save Granity. I finished the script in two intense drug fueled days and I knew exactly who I wanted to perform it. Hugh Jackman, the greatest showman. But he wasn't available. So I got the Granity Players. Alan Birchfield told me to get fucked. But what's the biggest strength of Granity? People. Good weed. <laughs> the Granity Players. 
tomorrow night, the Granity Players and Guy Williams live on stage in Westport. Yeah. Wow. And we're going to go there to Westport and we're going to show those Westportians and we're going to show Alan Birchfield what Granity is made of. Who's with me? Because yeah. Granity will never die. Because yeah. Granity's the greatest. Because yeah. in Granity we lost our sanity. Yeah. The players were in and it didn't take long before the whole coast was behind the hottest ticket in town. Oi. Fucking, we're going to see someone in Westport, Guy Williams, and the Granny Players. Fucking live. It's gonna be fantastic. After almost 45 minutes of grueling rehearsals, <laughs> we were ready to take our show on the road to Westport, the west end of the port. Granite has been destroyed by coastal erosion and climate change, but its council is controlled by coal mine owners who don't believe in global warming. I was left with no option but to write, direct and produce a hit musical to make the $30 million needed to save the town. And tonight is opening night. Nervous excitement pulsed through the theatre as we prepared to rock Westport with one of the best shows they'd ever seen in their shit lives. It was time for Granity the Musical. How are we tonight? My name is Guy Williams and uh, welcome to the world premiere of Granity the Musical! It's so nice to be here in Westport today. I'll tell you what, I was just in Greymouth the other day and it was fucking shit. Here we go. Good luck, guys. Come on, guys. Show. Go, guys. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> I'm standing here in a quaint South Island coastal town full of friendly folk who in the next few years will slowly drown. It's got a judo club. Martial arts right by the ocean, but judo is no use against coastal erosion. The sea's too strong, now our houses are gone. And Alan Birchfield doesn't care how we feel. Our primary school has a fucked up pool. You know it's such a tragedy, in granity, in granity. Do you hear the children cry when the sea levels rise and your whole town dies? No future for humanity, in granity, in granity. The tide will wash us all away, so we wear wetsuits and slippers all day. Living next door to a manatee, in granity, in granity. to Alan Birchfield and the world. The people of Granity will never die. And even if we didn't quite make our $30 million target, we did make just enough to help out a mate. Lord, how are you, mate? Oh, all good. Yeah. I actually, uh, I got a little saying for you. 
What? <laughs> Thanks, man. Fucking. What can I say? I've fucking come to like you a lot. <laughs> I like you too, mate. Thank you very much. No, it's been a beautiful thing. It's been a beautiful thing. And with that, season two of New Zealand Today was sadly over and I had some time to reflect. People often ask me, where do you find these weird people? What are you guys up to? Ketamine. <laughs> Ketamine, yeah. I don't find them. They're everywhere. Well, you know what that means. What does that mean? Jesus will be coming down the eastern skies any day. And I can't wait to see him. Because I've learned that the only normal people are the ones you don't know very well. So have I been brainwashed? Yeah, of course you have. You live in New Zealand, everyone's been brainwashed here. Except people like me, I'm one of the few that's not been brainwashed properly. I met a lot of amazing people. Nice. I'm in the process right now of fine-tuning my whole body to be a didgeridoo. That's fucking good. That's really good stuff. And others I found hard to understand. I do a lot of work in my community. But don't you think you should be less of a dipshit? Why is that? Why should you be less of a dipshit? Why? But I loved all of them, because they're just doing their best. Everybody fucked up. I've been married three times, I fucked up. You've been married three times? Yeah. What happened to your three marriages? They died. What? And that's all we can do. Blew all my teeth out, broke my leg. So when you said you blew all your teeth out... Because life is hard. I'll come and be in his fucking studio down. <laughs> and we should celebrate the things that make us weird. Do you have a job? I am working in the crypto world Sick. at the moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. But also, we should probably put a little bit more money into supporting people with alcohol and drug problems. You know what you're going to horse tranquilizer, eh? Call me a stallion then, because fuck, <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> So thank you for watching season two from everyone at New Zealand today. I hope this isn't the end, but for now, goodbye. So is this goodbye? Is this goodbye? When you do stupid shit, I show up like the fairy godmother of stupid shit to interview you. Oh, facts. Oh, hey, it's a kid show here. It's a kid show. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs>